Hello and welcome to Storytime with Tom and Mike. I'm Tom. And that makes me the bearded wonder, Mike. Hmm. Yeah. I can't see us. That's really... Do you want to be able yes, to see I yourself? Yes, I have to. You have to be able to I see yourself. I have to. I, I can't. I can't All do right. this. All well, right. Bring up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I just made... That's... You narcissistic okay. no, 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 no. It's fucking weird not having the headphones on. It's even weirder looking at a blank screen. It is weird. Yeah. Yeah. We need to be looking That's, at that's the reason why I don't, I don't really want to look at myself. I, I need to look at you. That's what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. So I'll look, like, I'll look at you and you look at me. Yeah, that works pretty well. Stop it. I'm looking at you. Stop it. So, have you ever eaten a frozen Pop Tart? Not one that I took out of the freezer, no. If I had one that I left in, like, my car overnight and it got real cold and the next morning, yes. So, not like an intentionally frozen Pop Tart, but a Pop Tart that's been frozen, yes. So, apparently, it's a thing. Yeah. It's on the back of the, the packaging on the Pop Tarts. It says, however you like it. And there's a couple different options and one of them's frozen. I'm like, I'm going to try that. And, you know? It wasn't any different than a normal pop tart. It was just cold. It's a lot harder to chew. Yeah, harder to <laughs> chew. And then when it warmed up in your mouth, it tasted like a cold pop tart. And it was like I kind of would have just preferred to have kept this in the the toaster. So yeah, I I eat them untoasted almost exclusively, and it's not it's not because I don't like them in the toaster. It's that a lot of times when I eat a pop tart, I'm usually starving. Right. And like I'm too lazy to walk to the kitchen at the other end of the house to put my pop tart in the toaster. If I kept the toaster in my living room. Right. That would be the uh that would be the ultimate. Then I, I wouldn't have to do that. I feel like that would be a fire hazard though. Yeah, yes and no. Well, wait till I get my fireplaces in uh this summer. Then I'll be able to just throw my pop tarts onto the stove yeah. and be able to toast them. What would a pop tart be like in a one of those mountain pie? things i think that would be delectable i think that would be ridiculously good i think yeah. you would almost i think to do it right you'd almost have to make your own pop tart you'd have to do oh. like you know like a thicker bread like no, dough like a phyllo and, bread yeah and like then phyllo jelly bread? inside mm. of it Dude. did we just eat and we just did a whole episode <laughs> about food and here we are talking about well i brought it up all it's right real my, quick it's my favorite pop tarts uh, brown sugar or cinnamon? No. Frosted cherry. Frosted cherry? Frosted cherry has forever been my favorite. I don't really But care. the brown sugar cinnamon is a very close second. I don't really care. I like strawberry. I don't really care for artificial cherry. Like usually artificial cherry just doesn't do it for me. I it's have true. to have regular real cherries. Because like I've gotten the Walmart brand and the cherry and those taste like Twizzlers nibs, mm. which is really fucking uh, weird in a pop tart, especially when you heat yeah. it up. It's like it almost looks like uh, like red toothpaste, oh, and it tastes like Twizzlers nibs that are hot. Is it like that toothpaste that has like the three colors? Yeah, the, what was that? The aqua fresh, aqua fresh. Or, <laughs> yeah, yeah, aqua yeah. fresh. It's like that kind of a red, but uh, yeah, it's it's really it's really strange. And anybody who eats unfrosted pop tarts has a fucking problem. Because that's just weird. Yeah, that is weird. That's yeah. like, you know, all right. I will say that if you're hard up and they don't have the brand True. that you want, then it's an acceptable purchase. But if you bought a 12 pack, when you, you know, you don't, you're not dedicated to the cause. You're not prepared to come back to the grocery store in two days and see if they have them back in stock. Mm -hmm. You're, you're wussing out. You're bowing down to the man, the Pop Tart man, and I'm not cool with it. <laughs> Can't be eating the frosting less. What's the matter with you? Although I will say, I think that like the cookie dough ones, if it's or the chocolate chip cookie ones, if they're frosting less, are passable. Because sometimes the frosting is a little bit much on them. I am just so not. So then you get like a hot chocolate chip cookie. I'm just not much of a fan of the. Um, yeah, it's something wrong. I'm not much of a fan of like the the, the cookie style or candy style ones. Like oh, the, I will the fucking s'mores tear up. Mm, I love the s'mores ones. I like mm. to take when they're hot and you like separate them. Yeah. And then you got the marshmallow on one side and the chocolate on the other. And I'll like do that kind of a deal with them. Same with the uh, cookies and cream. I think the problem, I, I've never had the cookies and cream. I might give that a go. Um uh, it, I just, it's always that when I look at them, they look so fucking good. And then I toast them up. And they don't meet my expectations. 
So it's not that they're not good. They're just not as, they're not what I wanted. Because I what I want is like what we're talking about. The, fo- the homemade shit, man. Mm. How fucking dope would that be? Just, I mean, basically we're baking at that point, which is yeah. fine. But, <laughs> you know. If you find anything that beats homemade chocolate chip cookies, you let me know. Because I don't think that's possible. There is nothing. No. They yeah. are perfection when it comes to baking. Even bad homemade chocolate chip cookies are better than yeah, store-bought than store-bought ones. Store-bought anything, yeah. yeah. Even the ones you can get at the bakery most of the time aren't quite as good because straight out of the oven. there's a oven, lot of salt in them. Yeah. Like that's one thing that I've become super sensitive well, to they, in my baked goods is salt. and like, They have to keep them shelf-stable for a yeah, while, Yeah, stuff I that guess. comes out of bakeries has a lot of salt in it. Like yeah. I can taste it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just to keep it shelf-stable longer. Could be. So I'm not really sure, but yeah, I like homemade everything. Well, Jennifer, we've, I've talked about that before. Like Jennifer makes a lot of really good desserts. Mm -hmm. I I, I sort of say like, I'm the entree guy and she's the dessert person. Yesterday she came up to me and she said, do you trust me to experiment with the, with the dinner? And I was like, well, what'd you have in mind? And she said, I'm going to take the ground turkey and then some rice and maybe some beans and then some spices. And I said, what spices? She said, I don't know. I'm like, no, I'm not comfortable with you <laughs> in the kitchen. I haven't planned that one out yet. Because that means she's just going to go by whim and she doesn't have a feel for that. And I don't say that to insult her in any way. It's just something some people have and some people don't. I, she never acquired it. I did. I really have a knack for like tasting something and going, ah, oh, this needs this. She doesn't quite have that. Her palate is and her sense of smell is is isn't that great either. So well, it's I think, a lucky thing she lives with you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or something to that effect. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. or but, when I'm here. <laughs> but uh well yeah, for sure. Um but yeah, so so she, I she either goes by tried and true recipes or she lets me cook and you know I because I get ornery when it's something that I can't eat because it's bland or it's whatever you know hers just tends to be a little on the bland side which again she has a compromised sense of smell so yeah I am a uh, I I am am an, an eater more mm-hmm. than a maker with stuff but uh, yeah my uh, my palate is sophisticated enough. Being that, that I, you uh, are a bit of a craftsman, you should try cooking more often because it's actually quite fun. If, if, I find if that got, I don't like, have to do it, and that's probably the biggest reason why I don't. Yeah, but yeah. now now that uh, Jane is working um, a more steady uh, amount, I, I, I inevitably will end up making food. At yeah. some point in time, because I was I was pretty good with experimenting with stuff. I used to make stuff for my kids when uh, when she wasn't there to cook for them, mm-hmm. and my kids always liked the stuff that I made too. Yeah, well, I mean, it's sort of I, I guess, and that's another thing is that Jennifer's not like super food oriented like I am, and I think that to have that knack, you have to be kind of cr- food crazy. You know, which is why I think you'd be an amazing cook. I Thank think you. once you got the sense, like, part of it is having everything at the ready in your kitchen, having all your dishes clean, having everything in its right place. And that's really, really hard when you're depressed and you're behind on that shit. Hey, you ain't kidding. Yeah. Catching up on housework has been my has been my life's um, mission for the last couple weeks. Yeah. And, uh, well, Dude, you when, can when, see. when you've got nothing yeah. but that on your mind, you become hyper focused on it. Uh-huh. And then when I don't get a lot of shit done, you feel like an asshole. I feel like a gigantic, worthless turd. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but I have been. I my my uh, my mother was like, you do a little bit of stuff in a room every day. Yep. And I've kind of taken that to heart and trying to do that and stuff. The, the biggest problem that I run into, which has always been the biggest problem, is that the other inhabitants of my house come through and it's like a fucking Tasmanian devil came through. It's with, like pig pen. With, with a trash can and just threw shit in all directions. Yeah. 
It's like Tasmanian devil mixed with pig. Pen. Yes. And I'm like, what the fuck just happened? Nice. I just vacuumed this. I pulled out of my dining room because my dog, my, I have a German, a long haired German shepherd mm -hmm. and she sleeps up against, we have a, we have her gated into the kitchen area, which is about a third of the downstairs. Okay. Um, so that way she's not, she likes to play with the cats all the time. The cats don't want to play all the time. Right. So they have an escape. So I have to have them and, and there's more of them than there are of her. So they have a slightly larger area than what she has. Yeah. And but uh, they can come and go as they please. Yeah. And they yeah. can go, they go through the gate and she, she is like, it's funny. If I walk down the stairs and I'm quiet and I peek out there, she'll be laying with like two of the cats and they're sleeping in the same spot. And I'm like, oh, that's so cute. If she knows that I'm there, she's like, I'm gonna fucking eat them. You better get them out of here before I eat them. <laughs> you know, like she she totally puts on this act for me. Like, I hate cats. And, unless I'm not looking and then she's like, oh, I secretly love you guys. Don't tell. Don't tell. You mm -hmm. know, that's, uh, that's the kind of shit that my dog uh, does. But Back to the point where she was laying, there was a massive pile of hair from her and from the cats. And I was like, holy shit. I went out there and swept that area. I had enough hair that I could have probably knitted the both of us cat hair and dog hair sweaters <laughs> and might have still had some left over. But then I realized that, that would probably be really itchy. The dog hair especially because she's got a little, her hair is soft-ish. But because she uh, has like an outdoor coat, uh, it's not quite as nice as the cat's hair is. It's not quite as soft, like you know. Yeah. It would probably probably dog, make me itchy. Dog hair is a little more coarse, I find. The cat's hair is so fine that when they get on your nose or on your glasses and then they tickle you your itch. eye, it makes you itch. Yeah. Dog hair is so heavy it just doesn't even stick like that. Now my uh, now her ear hair, I will say this. A million times, and I'll always be right. The German Shepherds have the softest ear hair mm -hmm. I have ever felt in a dog before. <laughs> her ear hair is so fucking soft. I want to just like, like their little two little teddy bears on top of her head. <laughs> I just want to pet them. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to pet her ears all the time. I remember my dad would always be like, "Yeah, don't keep fucking with the dog's ears. You'll break the cartilage in her ears and then her ears won't stand up. And I was like, I remembered that and I don't do that because of it. But uh, yeah, she's got, she's such a sweetheart and she's got the softest fucking ears. Oh my God. And such a well-behaved dog too, considering that we've never done any training with her. Mm -hmm. Except for when it comes to the cats. Because well, she how, wants, to, yeah. wants to play with them all the time. That's how Dexter is. I'm not playing with the cats, but like... Dexter is, never given is the him, fucking best boy. We have never given him any training of any kind. He, The only problem I have with him is sometimes at night, I'll take him outside and he'll decide, Hey, I'm going to go off into the back part of the yard and then off into the pond. Mm -hmm. And he's in total darkness and he can see just fine, but I can't see shit. And my anxiety is flaring up and I've got my phone in my hand and I'm going, where are you with the flashlight? You know? Isn't it and, funny how all of us instinctively, you don't like, there could be a flashlight and you would still be like, hold on, boop, and hit the flashlight yeah. thing on your phone. And, well, it, and it doesn't work once it gets past like a foot and a half in front of you. There's nothing. I had a flashlight and I lost it. I actually have one up there that I keep forgetting about. I just re-found it because I just cleaned it. Oh, dude, I, I have an unhealthy, unhealthy obsession with flashlights. Yeah. Flashlights, boots, gloves, and, and, and leather goods. I just, there was a place that had so, a leather candle on sale. A leather candle? Leather scented candle. Dude, it uh, smelled so fucking good. I love that good. smell. I love that smell. But I was told I wasn't allowed to bring it home, though, because apparently my my uh, significant other and my kids didn't like it. <laughs> you got vetoed? I did. I got vetoed. I got who, vetoed out of that delicious smell. I was going to say, who has the veto power in the house? Is it Jane or is it the kids or is it both? It's more the kids. Yeah? To be honest with you. I would think it's mostly your daughter. Because your, your, I your youngest. My spend, well... She seems to have an enormous my second, sway on Yeah, my second. Well, things. she she definitely is the boss. There's, yeah. there's no two ways about that. She's the overall boss of everything in my house. Um, my my son, my second oldest, would would probably be a very would be a close second to her because he doesn't he doesn't ask for much. So when he says to me like I don't want that or I want that, 
it always like I always am like, OK, well, he spoke up about it, so it must be important. So I'm not going to do it or I am going to do it, you know, whichever way that goes. Because like Jane and I, we don't spend a whole lot of time in the same rooms because of the way her schedule is and the mm -hmm. way that I've fucked mine up so badly over the years. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I'm like you, you know, like I'll wake up at two o'clock in the morning and be like, I'm oh, wide awake. What's going on here? I want, or I'll go to bed at one o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and uh, I've been up. Half there's the no night rhyme or reason. Yeah, like, there's it. Yeah. absolutely nothing. It's not the best, but I prefer it. I, cause I don't like mornings, like yeah. anything before like 12 or 10, maybe I'm like, this is the lightest gross to me. I associate it with <laughs> shitty jobs and shitty school. Yeah. And two days this week, I had to get up and take her to work. And both days were a uh, revelation to me. <laughs> and like, this is why I'm not usually up at six in the morning, because this yeah. sucks ass. Yeah, it's just shitty. It's it, And my son looks at me and goes, you're preaching to the fucking choir. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I know you have to do that but still. See, I'm like, I did that too, so. But see, his generation's going to have the, the ability to work from home or remotely for almost everything. Mm -hmm. And once these fuddy-duddies get out of the work pool and, and the, the new grown-ups take over, then that's going to be the thing because it just makes more sense on every level yeah. to have a remote workforce I and think, to have to pay overhead for yeah, some I huge think that, fucking uh, Yeah, building. the 2020 really brought that to light. Uh -huh. And I read something the other day that said – the reason why a lot of these businesses are pushing so hard for people to come back to the office is because they're embarrassed by the amount of money they spent making all these fucking offices and buildings and renovating them and everything. Yeah. And they're like, we got to get our money's worth out yeah, of that Yeah, they want to justify And that's the it. only reason yeah. why, because, yeah, think about it, man. Mm -hmm. Like, if an if a at-work accident happens and you're in your own house, there would be, there would be no workers' comp. Right. Because it's your own fucking house. That's right. your fault. Right. You know, like it would, I can't imagine the amount of overhead that they would, you know, do away get rid, with. Get rid of, exactly. Yeah. It doesn't make sense for them for them on a business standpoint at yeah. all. It really feels like they're just I mean, except for the on. things like service industry, hospitality industries, and, and so forth, where well, you have to have yeah. a place where you go. Of course, but there doesn't need to be a brick and mortar for most things anymore. No. And it, he, there's a number of reasons, uh, aside from what you said, as to why a remote workforce, it makes more sense. Uh, 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 there's less transmission of, of, of illnesses, mm -hmm. colds, flus. So you're talking less like sick days. Less sick days, right? Lost man hours, as it were. It's more neurodivergently friendly that a person who has ADHD or autism or some other factor in their life. Severe anxiety. Severe anxiety, depression, can set their work area to their liking, their level of noise, their level of distraction, whatever. It takes discipline. It's not necessarily easy, but it takes discipline to do that at work anyway. Yeah, it takes when, discipline to get up and commute. Exactly. So it's... It, for someone who has, you know, bipolar like me, uh, now with the line of work that I'm in now, you know, it's I can do whatever fucking hours I want. And it's very, you know, nice. And I'm very lucky to be able to do it. But um, I feel like that's just the way it's going to be. Like, you don't need an entire staff there all the time, unless you're like in tech support or something, just have one or two knowledgeable people on call. Right. And then have everyone else work when they want to work. You know, I'll take a week of on call. Uh, if that's the type of situation I were in, uh, if the rest of the time I could get up at fucking midnight and decide to work until six. Yeah. And the thing is, is that when you're in that zone, you're in the zone and you get more Auto work zone. done. <laughs> you get more work done in that zone than you do if you're forced to do it at eight o'clock in the morning and some asshole's got a cup of coffee and he's talking to you about the latest episode of whatever. You know? Even even when I when I worked uh in security, I fucking hated day shift. Yeah. And unfortunately, because I was a manager, I was forced. Mm -hmm. to be there on day shift. And when I suggested one time to my boss, wouldn't it be better instead of having all the management here from eight to four, 
wouldn't it be better if like you worked the morning shift and I worked like second shift and then we're covering management mm -hmm. for 16 hours instead of eight yeah. and uh, I got shot down like a lead balloon. I think that was mostly because then she would actually have to have worked <laughs> for eight hours, yeah. you know, but uh, yeah, it didn't, didn't work out that way. I loved, I fucking love working second shift. There was something special about, mm -hmm. I could still go to bed the time that I would normally go to bed when I got home, but I didn't have to get up early in the morning yeah. and get up in the early afternoon if I decided to sleep in and, uh, There's something and, you know, do my thing. And I'm like, I was more awake. I was more there, more present. If I start work at eight, I'm up at like, well, if I'm working, it's, let's say I have an, an hour commute. If I am to be at work at eight o'clock, I'm up at 6.45, right? Like I'm not fucking around. I brush my teeth. I shower the night before. I, I brush my teeth, fucking throw something in the microwave, carry it in a precociously in a little paper towel to the car and then munch on them on my way to work, <laughs> right? If I'm working from home and I have to be up at eight o'clock and at my desk, I'm up at 7.45. Maybe not even that late because I can always brush my teeth and make breakfast later. There were times when I would just roll straight out of bed, smoke a cigarette and be at my desk. People don't smell your breath. They don't have to, right. When you're working. Oh, home. dude, more people than are willing to admit stop brushing their teeth on the regular after 2020. Well, I think I think a lot of people also stopped wearing appropriate pants. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, like, dude, they, I, I'm they only joke, wearing jeans because you're here. Yeah, they joke about that shit like, <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I got a suit on, but then no pants on. But that's that's a reality. It's that totally is a reality. fucking reality. <laughs> well, because let's be honest, jeans aren't that comfortable. I now you see I I find jeans to be the most comfortable thing ever personally. Well, I, I think it's. I've never been a big sweatpants guy, and the only reason why is because I like to have access to my stuff through my pockets, and that's and jeans have pockets, and that's that's really you my, can get you know, sweatpants with pockets. Yeah, but they're never quite. Like the sturdiness not isn't sturdy. there. My, yeah. my fucking wallet falls out, yeah. you know, and all that kind of stuff. So, well, I, I think, I think uh, you've reminded me of uh, a, one of our new bits. You're a monster. If you're a monster, the hell is wrong with you? Uh, so my entry for tonight is uh, if you sleep in jeans, you're a monster. <laughs> <laughs> Did I make you the reason why I almost choked there is because you do. My son has a habit of doing that. No, oh, I don't. He? No, I don't. But he has a habit of doing that. And, well, he's a terrible uh, monster. And I, yeah, I've said to him before. I'm like, what kind of an animal are you that you fucking sleep with your jeans on, dude? I'm like, that's fucking terrible. Because then here's the problem: when you have them on and you don't give your skin a break. You get all kinds of fuzzies, and then you leave little blue fuzzies on, like the toilet seat and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's unsettling. It's unsettling. Yeah, to yeah me. it's not cool. It's yeah. not cool. Yeah, don't be wearing your jeans to bed. And please take your shoes off, and hopefully your socks. Well, the socks. I can for I'm me give or is, take. is is a give or take because I like to sleep with my socks on. I need to have them off. Because well, it depends on the time of year. Winter time, definitely on because like I get under the covers and then I like roll the cover. Like I'll lift my legs up so the cover goes under my feet, mm -hmm. and then have like oh excuse me, this nice little foot cocoon going on there. Yeah, I get that. I, I but during usually... the summertime, no fucking way, man. There, I'm I'm sleeping in as little as I possibly can. I don't sleep naked because I have had my children walk into the room, and even though none of my children are under the age of sixteen anymore, they 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 still come in the room without knocking, and they don't want to see dad nude. Like that's uh, that seems rules. like a simple equation. Uh, yeah, I mean, don't seriously, see dad, nude. Don't <laughs> fucking walk in any old goddamn time. Well, you please. I, I, I wish, I wish I felt that way, but I don't. I feel like there's still a responsibility to me. Well, as yeah. long as they live in my house. Now, if they didn't live in my house and they come barging into my bedroom, you see what you see. You mm -hmm. catch me and your mom playing hide and seek, then too fucking bad. That's just the way it works. Hide the monkey. Yeah. You know, because I mean, what my when my kids were little. They walked in on us when we were doing stuff like that, which yeah. is fucking terrifying. Yeah, it's even worse yeah. when you nut as soon as they walk in the door because oh. then you're like, did I come because they in interrupted us? Oh my, that was weird. I'm just kidding. I, I know, but 
I'm glad that you're kidding. I'm glad that you're kidding. Yeah, sometimes my, uh, I can't tell because sometimes you will take it to eleven, and I don't know whether or not you're kidding. Usually, usually, uh, yeah, for that kind of stuff, I am. Uh, I'm, I'm pulling an act on you there. But now, I uh, it, there's nothing more um, shocking than having your kid see you naked unexpectedly. And then having to, like, you were like, oh, God, I just traumatized them. Mm -hmm. What are they thinking now? Like, I, my kid is going to close his eyes and see my naked form. Like, the, when we had the tornado a few, well, a few years back. Hell, that was fucking almost 15 years ago now. Holy shit. Yeah, right? It was at least, it was at least 12 years ago, I think, that that tornado came through. And I was getting ready to get in the shower, and I heard, like, that freight train sound that I've heard you hear that kind of wind rushing when a tornado. And yeah. I knew that we had a chance of it. And I looked out the front door and I saw my barbecue, which was chained to the porch at a 90 degree angle to the ground, fucking just floating right wow. there. And I was like, holy shit. I ran upstairs. I woke Jane up. She grabbed uh, our little, our youngest. I grabbed my son who was, you know, what, uh, six years old, something like that at that point in time. How old is he now? He's 17. So he might have been a little 12. younger than six, yeah. He would have been like 12. Well, no, because if 14. it was 12 years ago, 14. if it was 12 years ago from 17, would make him, uh, would have made him five at the time. I don't do math. Yeah, five plus twelve is seventeen. Terrible. Yeah, math. five plus twelve is seventeen. Anyway, I, I believe me. I don't. I don't be smart, you because I do that shit a lot of times. Where I'm like, yeah, I should be able to figure that out pretty easy. And I'm sitting there for five minutes going, carrying the one. Yeah, but you know what it is? It, it, I get this deer in the headlights thing when someone starts talking to me about math <laughs> yeah. because in my head I get in the clusterfuck and say I don't know math, so I become immediately closed off to it. But the reality is probably that I, if I just wrote it down oh well, even just like, think oh, about yeah. it rationally like yeah. okay well there's multiples of five everywhere so where how far are we away from those multiples of five is usually how i do math quickly but uh my in my naked state i ran and grabbed him and threw him over my shoulder and took him downstairs because we were going to go to the basement but we had this huge fucking like arched doorway in the middle of the house so we went to that instead because it was just easier, and I think he still has nightmares about my naked... He's over my shoulder, wakes up, and he's looking at my ass running down the steps. <laughs> well, yeah, now he associates your nudity with terror. Well, yes, as most children should with their parents. If you right. see your parents naked and you're like, not a big deal, or, Something hey, this is fun happened. times, you know, mm. like, uh, there's probably oh, something God. weird going on there. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie... Um, what dreams may come with Robin Williams, but the book that it's based on has this bit where it's talking about the, the their their parents because the one died, and it's like the son is talking about him, and they're saying how whenever they heard their parents making love, they wouldn't get embarrassed or or or, or creeped out. They would be happy because it was such a beautiful thing. And I just about puked in my fucking suit reading yeah, that shit. Yeah, that's... Um, I mean, I like that author, but duh, that was creepy to me. It's like, that's like that weird family on uh, Big Mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that, that they're Big always, mouth. that they're always like, uh, sex is a very natural thing. Yeah, I, uh, I, I always have preferred to keep... My, my, my <laughs> lovemaking and my naked activities, uh, as far away from my children as possible. Yeah. Because, uh, you really, if, if you're a parent that fucking is open about that stuff, uh, you're a monster. Mm. You are a fucking monster. And that's your monster. That's my week? monster. People who are like, All right. like, you know, hey, sex is great. And, we, and we're nudists and we walk around in front yeah. of our kids naked. You're a fucking yeah. monster. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah, that's, I tend to agree. That is disgusting. I never want to see my parents naked. Well, and it's not just that. It's also that it's just socially kind of immoral i mean there's nothing wrong with being naked but in a society where that kind of thing 
is perceived as sexualized by most of the world, you're doing your children a tremendous disservice to be a nudist right there because you're you're isolating them and making them into weirdos. So that's the first part. And then the second part is if you're open and frank about sex all the time with your kids, they're going to turn into real weirdos. Well, I, I joke around with my children about that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. but uh, not the real stuff. I'll say things like just to throw them off and gross them out at times, like just nothing that fucking Every explicit dad does that you know but um i distinctly remember one time we were going to we had gone to burger king and we were in the car on the way to probably some hardware store or something because my dad was driving and i said what he do you only drove to the hardware store and i said yeah and and my mom's i said something and my mom said your dad has a whopper and he goes i sure do <laughs> <laughs> that i i would fucking pay to hear your dad say that yeah. i really would because that would be pretty fucking hilarious and, and mom goes bruce <laughs> it's like what it's true <laughs> yeah, that's what she said i um forgot what i was gonna say now my <laughs> brain just fucking totally went black with that story well, you know, no 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 when my mom was younger i remember her telling me that there was a family on their block that was nudists. And then we're talking about, you know, the fifties and the sixties. Yeah. That's really, and I just, I just, I couldn't like, I thought about it once and I was like, I can see it in the sixties, but in the fifties, that seems really weird. Like if, if I like, you have to be careful who you bring home because you never know when your parents are going to be lounging around nude. Yeah. You know, and yeah, I'm just, you wanna bring I'm just your... thinking like all the nasty shit that we all do on a daily basis. I wouldn't want my naked ass sitting on my couch farting the way that uh, I do. And then have other people be over like, oh, go ahead and have a seat in the couch. Yeah, you might as well be like, hey, why don't you go ahead and stick your nude ass in my toilet? Yeah. Why don't you, why don't you come over here and get some pink eye off of my toilet? <laughs> <laughs> Last week, and I don't think this actually made it in the edit, but last week you brought up the Dungeons and Dragons movie yes. trailer. Uh, and you asked me if I would watched the trailer. I said I hadn't. And you said that was my homework. So I did mm -hmm. watch it. And I do have some notes. Well, please go ahead. Would you like me to start? Absolutely. All right. Bring my notes right here. Because my opinion of it, you know, is probably going to be a little different than yours. Okay, so I'd like to start actually with a roll back to 1999, to the original Dungeons and Dragons movie starring uh, Jeremy Irons and uh, Marlon Wayans. Didn't Jeremy, <laughs> that's a weird combination. Didn't Jeremy Irons do the voice of uh, the agent from Splinter Cell? He may have. I'm pretty I, sure uh, he did. I mean, uh, he Sam have. Fisher. I think he did. Yeah, we'd have to look it up. Um, and then there was some dude with purple ears. You know, it like wasn't Marlon Wayans. Yeah, I'm surprised when I find one of the Wayans brothers in a movie and I wasn't expecting them. And I'm like, whoa, wait a second. Yeah, and Marlon Wayans is in some unusual stuff. Like he's in Requiem for a Dream and he plays a super serious role in that. He just hosted The Daily Show recently yeah. and was uh, actually surprised. I, mean, I should say surprisingly because, I mean, actors are actors just and they can do what they want. But it surprised yeah. me that he was on there and he mm -hmm. was uh, he's was, he was really fucking good. Well, Still it's funny. one thing to be a good actor. It's another thing to be a good host. There's a huge difference there. I mean, that's a whole different. I think it's a whole different skill. He was good at it. Mwah. Yeah. Clear performance, Marlon. Being a good interview, especially if you're interviewing people, being a good host is about putting your personal shit and your ego on the side and presenting and 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 championing championing your guest or Topping. guests. Yeah. Yeah. But uh so I did take a look at the new trailer. So the old movie was just fucking dreadful. It was terrible. Uh the new one looks campy and silly. Yes. And and maybe too much so. Um but uh, it's got a lot of fan service. I will say that in the trailer alone, I noticed a displacer beast, a dragon, an albira, a mimic, and what might have been a gelatinous cube. Because at one point they're in like this arena setting, and they go one, two, three, jump, and they jump into what looks like a gelatinous cube. Although that doesn't make sense because gelatinous cubes dissolve your skin, 
So that would be fucking suicide. But yeah, maybe, maybe that was the point. Else. Maybe they were killing themselves in that. Maybe, story. yeah, they were like, we want out of this movie. <laughs> but I mean, and then there's a really funny bit that I saw a little clip of, um, uh, where where they cast the spell "Speak to Dead" or "Speak with Dead," I think it's called, um, which is a spell that lets you. It's a, or a low level spell that lets you cast on an undead or a, a like a corpse or a skeleton mm -hmm. and it can answer five questions and then it will fall back into a state of unrest or rest and it will not ever answer any more questions so in the clip they bring this thing up from the dead and they say can you understand me it says yes does that count as a question he turns to the other people did that count as a question he goes yes <laughs> wait, now you're down two. <laughs> wait wait that counted yes and then someone else asks another question. He goes, no. He said, no. <laughs> and then it just collapses back. He's like, <laughs> fuck, get me a shovel. And I was like, you know what? The thing that makes that funny and the campiness involved is when you imagine that each of the characters in the movie are being played by a real person in someone's garage. That's why I want to watch the movie. Because who in, that's... Who was in the movie now? Was it... Uh... I cannot remember any of the actors name actresses name actress or actresses names. I do know. I know I've Michelle seen... Rodriguez. I think is is the one uh, character is the one uh, that's in the movie. I don't know for sure. I know that uh, the dude who played uh, Captain Kirk in the new Star Trek movies. Okay, it was Chris Pine. Then. Chris Pine. Yeah. Yeah, and then the redheaded girl from It, the first one. Don't remember. Um, and then. There's like two other actors, but at least, and then a bad guy. Um, but I, I, I just, I have to watch the trailer a few more times. Maybe. I just let's look uh, it up on IMDb. Why not? One of those things uh, about movies like that. Any movie that's been made from a game, uh, whether it be an an RPG type game like Dungeons and Dragons or even Mario or something like that, is they always seem to. It has to be funny, and there's other times, like the new Mario movie, where they fucking just ruined it. To me, yeah, you're right. Michelle Rodriguez, yep. Justice Smith, Reggae Page, or Page, Daisy Head, <laughs> Chloe Coleman, or Daisy Head. She got a head. For Hugh a Grant. Wow, Hugh Grant's in it. You haven't seen him in much lately. Yeah, no, I haven't seen him in much of anything um, really ever. <laughs> it's Hugh Grant for crying out loud. Yeah. Huh. Because they have, what's his name? Chris Pratt playing Mario. And he's not even like doing a, a, like a Mario voice where he'd be like, let's go. <laughs> or something. He's like, let's go. I'm like, that's not fucking right. Or let's go. When you do it and it's. You Not, know, yeah, and it's there's no uh, accent put on it. It sounds dumb. <laughs> like I just I I can't right now. I'm thinking like the ultimate uh, Mario and Luigi were Captain Lou Albano, and uh, I can't remember the guy who played Luigi off the top of my head. I know who you're talking about, but, but uh, yeah. from the Mario Brothers show that was on back in the day. Yeah, like, they were the perfect embodiment to me of of the Mario Brothers, and everything since then is kind of, eh. yeah. Well, I mean. Here's the other thing, uh, unpopular opinion, but I know you're going to be in agreement with me on this. I don't give a fuck about Mario. <laughs> I don't. I really don't. I don't care. It's true. It's not a character I like. I, he's like Mickey Mouse. He's like, ha ha, I'm so friendly and clean and happy. And I'm like, I am like, I'm, that's poisonous to me, right? Like, I want my characters to have a little twist of, of unwholesomeness and, and, those two characters are far, far, far too wholesome for my liking. I just, I never made the connection between Mario and Mickey, but now you just made me see that. It's the same fucking character. Yeah, I've never, I've never been a huge fan of the Mario Brothers video games. <laughs> oh I think we've talked about this before. You yeah. and I have probably not, we're not on here, but uh, platformers like that have never really been my, my thing, except for when I had the Game Genie. My brother bought a Game Genie, and I had it for my uh, Super NES. So I actually was able to really kick some ass in the game then. It was easier. 
So therefore, I liked it better, I guess. So there's a video game I'm sure you've heard of called oh, yeah. Kingdom's Heart. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen this? No. Okay, so this is a video uh, of the death scene <laughs> in Kingdom Hearts where Goofy, Goofy gets hit in the face with a meteor. <laughs> the funniest goddamn thing. Look out! <laughs> that was very satisfying. You know, speaking of Chris Pines, I was talking about, is it Chris Pines or Pine? I believe it's just Pine because his dad was Robert Pine, who was Captain Gatrer or Lieutenant Gatrer. I I don't remember what his rank was. Sergeant Gatrer, maybe, and then he kept getting uh, on chips. Okay. okay. Which, by the way, box set, complete box set, is available for that too. Hmm. That was one of my favorite shows when I was a kid. I fucking love chips. There's a new show series based on that show. I don't know if it's good or not. My wife has watched it, but I, not, I didn't know there was. Uh, I think it's on Netflix. Uh, or well. Hulu. Let's fucking look for this. Yeah, she says it's pretty good. Cause I, uh, I love, I love chips. Yeah, um, I never got into it. I just, it was never on at my house. You know what I mean? Like it was just not something that was watched. It was the music, and like just motorcycles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like the two things that did it for me. I could have like cared less if they were cops or yeah, you know, bad bikers who were doing good for somebody or renegades. I don't give a shit. I just yeah. that. <laughs> In the music and everything, and then the motorcycles, that was it for me, yeah. man. I was hooked. Yeah. But uh, I brought up Chris Pine. Um, so I was thinking the other day about Star Trek. And in particular, I was thinking about the episode in The Next Generation where Riker is about to take on, like a, it's like a, a Starfleet exchange program where he is mm -hmm. to get on the the vessel one of the klingon vessels and act as like a an ensign Sorry, or, since or we as a commander or something right i vaguely remember that premise and as part of it he has to prepare himself by eating a shit ton of klingon food what is that it's a klingon delicacy hippias claw this is heart of targ this of course is gog Gah? Yeah, serpent worms. You like some? That he has replicated. And it's all fucking gross looking, right? Well, yeah, I mean, naturally. And and he's enjoying it. And as I'm watching it, I'm I, I it just now occurred to me as from I didn't occur to me when I was watching, but it occurs to me now that assuming that it was done right by the replicators, one of two things either he's eating the blandest possible version of any food he could care to order in their database or the best possible example of that meal hmm. it's 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 one or the other it can't be bad because the technology would prevent it from being like just completely tasteless right but it might not be spicy or whatever you know what i mean they might not be able to capture that sort of bang that you get because it's just a generic <laughs> blueprint for food or if it's cloned from food somehow right like they scam the food and get the perfect then wouldn't it make sense to hire the best chef you could possibly hire and be like make this food and then we'll scan it and we'll give you like you know like fame for it or whatever because they didn't have money in that side yeah they almost like Dude, that would be a ridiculous undertaking to build up a database mm -hmm. large enough to cover the entire universe's uh, all the palette. different species. Yeah, yeah, wow, that would be fucking insane. Yeah, because you'd have to have like a great example mm -hmm. to put through your, you know, yeah, analyzing system and be like, okay, well now you take like a, a pinch of um, root of whatever mm -hmm. <laughs> like I, I i can't think of any uh words that would even sound remotely klingon right well i mean what would the replicator do exactly just it just constructs reconstructs it on a molecular level right? i would think it would have to yeah because otherwise you'd have to have a store of spices yeah. and ingredients and i don't think the perishable food would travel well in space not really plus where the hell would you keep it all 
they're on journeys for months at a time. They've before. got a lot of room. They've got a lot. They of have room. a lot of room, but they have a fuck ton of people on those ships. Like the newest one, the biggest one has like six thousand people on it. Which is like, if you think about that, that's it's a like, small arena. That's a small arena. That's like a fucking building in Harrisburg, built an office building just full of fucking workers. Imagine the ships all those are people. So much bigger than that. Uh, you could fit a small arena into a very small portion of the enterprise, even. But a lot of it is engineering. And yeah, yeah. Facilities for me. Life support. And right. All that exactly. kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I would say you'd cut the amount of actual available space down to maybe a third of that. Maybe they should come up with a new show, like how small houses are becoming a huge thing on TV. It should be tiny like Star ship. Trek, Star Trek Tiny Ship Edition, <laughs> <laughs> where they're floating around like a cereal box. Yeah, yeah. It's like then the seals lashed on with like duct tape and fucking select uh, Tupperware containers are actually considered because you know they're big enough that they can fit inside them. And stuff. That would be that would be amazing. Star Trek. Uh, I know Gene Roddenberry is obviously long since gone right but if anybody's listening from star trek star trek tiny ships edition i, I gotta see it uh, yeah we need i would watch the shit somebody. out of that we need to send an email to yeah somebody. i would watch the shit out of started. that that would be amazing <laughs> there's a uh, podcast it's no longer active uh it was called uh Imp improvised star trek and uh anyone who's listening who knows uh hello from the magic tavern will know uh uh, Matt Smith is, is Matt Smith. Is that him? No, maybe not Matt Smith. I can't remember, but he's the guy who does use uh, does the, uh, captain on this, 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 of the ship Sisyphus. And basically what they do is they take a suggestion of a title from some member of the audience and they just riff from there and they do such a good job. It's like a half hour. Each episode It all has a conclusion and everything, you know, and it's fucking hilarious. And uh, like like one of their characters is uh, um, in, an Andorian, I think. He's got like uh, spots all over his face, mm -hmm. and uh, he has a parasitic worm as a as a as sort of controlling his mind. But he has all his memories from his old life, and uh, and he's his his shtick or his his gimmick as a character is that he's an irredeemable pervert. <laughs> <laughs> and then Cap Captain James Back uh, Valentine Baxter is just just this slovenly, selfish, sexist moron who's just cowardly about his not cowardly exactly. He's just he thinks he's as good as like the high ranking people, but he's not. I, I, the whole as a Star Trek fan, you need to listen to it. It's mm -hmm. really fucking funny. Um, so how do the food process or the food uh, replicators, I wonder, in Star Trek, how do they compare to the runs on Red Dwarf? I wonder if they're like a very I, similar system or if they're totally different. In my watching of Red Dwarf, and you know I've watched that series ad nauseum. Yeah. Well, um, so have I. You you definitely more than me, but still. And also having read the books, mm -hmm. which uh, which are direct creations of the authors Not of I the don't. show. <laughs> you should because they're very funny. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, let me have them. Let me have them. Uh, but anyway, having done all that, I would say there's a significant difference in that the food replicators seem to be like base blocks of matter that didn't get reassembled into something resembling food. Mm-hmm. Whereas the stuff from Red Dwarf is coming from the stores. It just feels like when I when I have seen it, it was just like a, a vending machine uh, not not replicating more right. just dispensing. Exactly. It's a dispenser. In episode one, in fact, they their job was to clean the dispensers. Yeah. That was what they did. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you're absolutely right the that was the angle um is that the, it was just coming from the ship's storage so red somewhere. dwarf must have had a massive storage see they went the opposite route well in in the movie or in the book that the ship is supposed to be something like a mile and a half long and by like a quarter of a mile deep by wow. a quarter of a mile Starship wide enterprises 
supposed to be? Which we one? Really, uh, I would say um, either the next generation or one of them. I, I don't know the. I mean, even the original, because the amount of crew they were supposed to have had on the on the next generation seemed to be much larger. Oh, here we size go. Size comparison. Size comparison. Go. Okay. I bet we can get a really sweet image here. Like that one right there. Okay. The second one over or that one there, either or. Yeah. yeah. So this is. That's pretty big. Hold on. I like to look at it at full size. <laughs> you may not. Fucking Pinterest is garbage. Fuck off, Pinterest. Dude, I, Pinterest drives me crazy whenever fuck. that's an option to look oh. at something. I'm always like, man, fuck that shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. it seems like it'd be a great idea. Well, there you go. Look at that one there where it's on the map and you can see that it takes up three quarters of the U.S. Well, according to this, the smallest one from Star Trek, uh, yeah, is the size of a small book. So that's not going to be helpful at all. Yeah, uh, that's, yeah that's incredibly useless. Oh, oh, this one looks cool. Okay, and it's Reddit too, so you'll actually be able to look at it. Yeah. Can I zoom? Oh, it's a video. Look Why these, is it a video? Look at all these enterprises. Why the fuck is this a video? That's a good question. It's One a still fucking image. For. Yeah. It's a, it's a video of a still image. And he can't zoom in. All right. So the length of the smallest one is 225 meters. The largest one is 756 meters. So meters to feet. Seven hundred and fifty-six. Two thousand feet, twenty-five hundred feet. So that's short of a mile. Yeah, because isn't a mile like three thousand something? Something like that. Now, of course, if I'm wrong, uh, I'm probably wildly. Big is red dwarf ship. Red Swarf. <laughs> How big is the Red Swarf? Five miles long. That's five miles long. Okay, so it's, yeah. it's considerably bigger. Yeah, it's described in the book as a big red me metal fist. <laughs> and it's pretty, or, or like a slug. And uh, it also talks, it's really funny because there's like, in the book, there's like cities on it, right? Mm -hmm. And it says, it's interesting that like, since these things would take, hundreds of years to build um the cities would change like this the infrastructure the, the architecture style would change as this as the city smoothed along the, the edge of the ship because new stuff was coming into trend <laughs> <laughs> so, so the earliest habitations on the ship are way way out of date So last week, we talked about toilet paper. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it was the subject of your, you're a monster if last week. Yeah. Well, interestingly enough, it gave me an idea for a new segment, a new bit uh, that we could do weekly called Weird Wikipedia, in which we look at the strangest articles on Wikipedia, um, keeping fully in mind that very, very, very pedantic people sit and monitor Wikipedia. Oh, yeah. All day and night. They have shit going to their phones if anything gets updated. And they will get out of bed and go check their shit to make sure it's accurate. Could you imagine if your whole life was, like, dedicated to ensuring the security of a Wikipedia page's entries. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and you know, any one of them, right? Oh, that's that that hurts me to see that one picture there, the two paper holders, each with different orientation. Yeah. That makes me that makes me uncomfortable, physically uncomfortable to look at that. Like, oh, we can cater to both. No, no, you shouldn't. So the 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 name of this article is Toilet Paper Orientation. It's available in 17 languages. It is. Some toilet 
Some toilet roll holders or dispensers allow the toilet paper to hang in front of, over, or behind, under, the roll when it is placed parallel to the wall. This divides options about which orientation is better. Arguments range from aesthetics, hospitality, ease of access, and cleanliness to paper convert. Converse. Con conservation. Conservation. I don't see why either one would have anything to do with paper conservation. Yeah. You're still going to use the same amount to wipe your ass regardless. Yeah. Ease of detaching sheaths and compatibility with pets. <laughs> okay. My pets don't use toilet paper. I wish they would. A couple of my cats could use it. The U.S. advice column Ask Ann Landers reported that the subject was one of the most controversial issues in the column's history and at 1500 15,000 15, letters in 1986 provoked the highest number of responses. Wow. So, arguments. The main reasons given by people to explain why they hang their toilet paper are given away are ease of grabbing and habit. The overposition resists, reduces the risk of accidentally brushing the wall or cabinet with one's knuckles. Truth. Potentially transferring grime and germs, making it makes it easier to visually locate and grasp the loose end, and gives the option to fold over the last sheet to show that the room the room has yeah, been. Yeah, I I worked in hospitality industry. We used to do what was called peeking the toilet paper, where you fold the ends under to make an arrow. Mm. I've always found it aesthetically pleasing. It is generally the uh, intended direction of viewing for the manufacturer's branding, so patterned toilet paper looks better this way. So even the fucking manufacturer knows, right? I don't now, see how the pattern would look better. I mean, specifically, what, because it was facing the right way? Because you're still going to see the pattern if it's going backwards. So I don't know. I don't know. I The validity of that is is questionable. Here is the under positions bullshit reasons. Well, this is obviously horse shit. Obviously. Uh, the under position provides a tidier appearance. Wow. Right. Yeah. Who cares? And that loose, the loose end can be more hidden from view. It reduces, the, reduces the risk of a toddler or house pet, such as a cat unrolling the t toilet paper when batting at the roll. Okay. I get that, I guess. Yes. Yes. And no. Cause I really feel like if a toddler gets a hold to, of it, yeah, he's just going to just grab the fucking loose end, regardless of which side it's on. Yeah. And many cats are going to be the same way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, well, it says reduces risk. Yeah. And in a recreational vehicle, it may reduce unrolling during driving. Okay. Well, you know what? Here's what you do while you're driving. You flip the shit around. When you get back and you're parked and you're taking a dump, you flip that motherfucker around How the right way. How about you not drive like a fucking idiot? Yeah. So your toilet paper doesn't unroll itself because I really feel like with that, either way, it's possible that it won't roll. I don't think the particular, you know, gravitational forces against your toilet paper are really, you know, changed that greatly with driving that you would be able to verify that. I, I just don't. Mythbusters. Partisans, I guess that's what we are. Mm -hmm. Partisans have claimed that each method makes it easier to tear the toilet paper on a perforated sheet boundary. So I guess, okay. Um, the over position is shown in illustrations with the first patents for free hanging toilet roll holders issued in, 19, in 1891. Mm -hmm. So basically this is, an, uh, this is an open and shut case as yeah. far as I can tell. All the arguments for doing it under are bullshit, and they go against not only the modern manufacturer standards and ideas, but the original motherfucking people who did it. And it says just a little lower than that, around 70% of people prefer the over position. Yeah. So even public opinion definitely swayed in the direction of the over position and the people who were doing under are those people that have to be conspiracy theorists about everything. Yeah. They're just doing it to be edgy. You're fucking edgy. Even in your toilet paper choices. Yeah. 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 Wish you would step off of that edge, my friend. <laughs> You're so fucking creeping, cringy, lame again. I see you <laughs> acting like you're Heath Ledger's Joker. <laughs> Is that a real song? Or were you just no, making that I was up? Making that shit. I was. That was pretty good. Well, it was. Wish you would step off that. The, step down from that ledge, my friend, which is like three doors down or third eye blind or some similar two thousands band. 
hmm. like alternative rock band. In his band. book, Conversational Capital, Bertrand Sivet gives toilet paper placement as an example of ritualized behavior. One, <laughs> one of the ways designers and marketers can create a memorable experience around a product that leads to word of mouth momentum. I, I can see that. Uh, Savet's other examples include shaking a box of Tic Tacs and dissecting Oreo cookies. Okay, I don't know that. I, mean, I guess. Uh, that's, I a very, guess. that's a very tormented way of looking at the world, isn't it? Thinking that everything um, has yeah, in that way. ritualized behavior. I mean, we, we engage in ritualized behavior all day, every day. Yeah. Whether you are trying to do it or not, you're still doing it. Well, it's essentially a dopamine hit, right? I well, mean, I would argue that even eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner is a ritualized behavior right. that is learned. So even well, something as mundane as that. He's, he, I mean, he's, he's not exactly – he's not judging it. He's just stating – he's just making an observation yeah. about it. But the fact that he kind of lays into it this – well, it can it can be used and exploited by marketers to create another ve vector for advertising their shit is a very tormented way of looking at the world. It's not inaccurate. It's just, oh, that's heavy, you know? I, I, I Like, is everything a fucking product? Is everything a fucking psyop? I just think we should have read the entire use and social studies part. I'm not going to, but uh, because I really feel like there's a lot of... Uh, Good stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I think it's going to draw a little bit too deeply into the behavior of toilet paper and um, what's the word that I'm, that I'm looking for here? Um, oh, I can't think of what the word was that I was going to use off and just off the top of my head. Uh, I'm kind of losing the thought now where they're putting false equivalency onto stuff. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. And being like, oh, well, you're doing this because of this. And you're doing, yeah. I put my toilet paper like, over the top of the roll because I hate my parents. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? So in other words, you're talking about correlation. Yeah. And yeah. I just, I just don't, I don't. Yeah. I think you could look at anything. Like, how do you of eat Of course grapes? you can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, because when your mother uh, looked at a grape when she, you were in utero, now you are a homosexual. Like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? You're crazy. Oh, that's, yeah, that correlation does not, uh, does not exist in that uh, respect. And we could talk about this literally for hours and hours and hours, but we're not going to because... I just looked at the time, and we are out of time. So that's going to be a story and a conversation for another time. Can I say time one more time? Okay. Thank you for watching Storytime with Tom and Mike. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed giving it to you. Giving it to you like the episode free of any kind of gross visualizations like I normally give you. I didn't give you a single one this time, so... Not even just now. You know, not even just now. I didn't even use one as an example. I'm just, uh, you know, you got a clean episode this time. This is one that you could potentially show to uh, mark dad. as safe for work. Yeah, you can show this to grandma. Yeah. I wouldn't show it to a little kid, but grandma can handle it. And my hair and my beard are looking pretty on, on point today. So yeah, I'm man. thinking like... It looks soft and fluffy. It is. It yeah. is very, yeah. Yeah. I use that. Uh, it smells great. It's, it's minty. It smells good. It's very yeah. minty. Yeah. Yeah. I use like uh, this shampoo that has like a uh, calming mint smell. Mm. Yeah. When I was using it, I was like, I'm going to take a nap because I feel so calm and minty right now. You know, but then I was like, I'm in the shower. The water's going to get cold. and <laughs> That's going to suck. So, okay. Bye. Bye.